Good morrow to you all. You have fallen on bad times. Brought to you by Royal Holloway's Shakespeare Society. You join me, Cassie Dixon. And me, Jack Hardman, as we bear some bardy truths. Hello everyone and welcome to Bard Times. Uh, I'm your host for today, I am Jack Hardman and with me is my guest Rebecca Bellis. Say hi Rebecca. Hello. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm well thank you. How are you today? Brilliant. I, I'm great, I'm great. I'm ready for this. I can't wait. Um, okay, so Rebecca, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you're doing at the moment. I'm Rebecca. I'm the treasurer of Shakespeare Society, but I'm also the director of the play this term, Massacre at Paris. Very fun. Brilliant. So Massacre of Paris. Massacre of Paris is the Shakespeare show this term. And uh, tell us a little bit about it. What is Massacre of Paris? Right. Um, Massacre of Paris is a play by Christopher Marlowe, one of Shakespeare's contemporaries. Um, it centres around the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre of 1572, which happened in Paris, and also the War of the Three Henrys, so Henry III of France, Henry IV of France, and Henry I Duke of Guise, and about their reach for the crown of France. Right. So it's like um, Game of Thrones, but Real. Yeah, yeah, pretty much actually. And French, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, what 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 drew you to this show? Why why do you why did you feel like you wanted to put this show on in this place now? Well, for one, Shakespeare Society has never done anything with Shakespeare's contemporaries ever in the history of the society. Really? Um, never. I know. That's really in surprising. Ten years, 10 years of the society and we've never done it um so I knew that I wanted to do a play by one of Shakespeare's contemporaries so I just ended up researching some of the plays some of Marlowe's plays are really famous things like Dr Faustus yeah but ultimately I knew that that's a play that there would be quite a lot of competition over and with it being an audio drama I felt like that would be more appropriate for a stage performance than an audio drama yeah I can see that um, so I ended up picking Massacre at Paris, which on the flip side is one that I feel would possibly never be done on stage at university. Yeah, it'd be pretty impossible to do, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. It's a lot of chorus work, a lot of dying as well, which is pretty hard to do on stage. So yeah, that's why I picked it. Brilliant. Uh, is there anything in particular about the piece that draws you in though? Is there something about it? the kind of the themes of it or the story that really grabs you? Definitely the historical context. Um, Of course, we can't forget that the events of the play actually happened in real life. Thousands of people died. And I, I feel like that's what drew me in, that it really happened. It's, it's not entirely a work of fiction, uh, sort of like a, biopic like Mm. you know things that actually happen but it's fictionalized and I just found that really interesting something that I wanted to work with that's a really exciting reason yeah um (laughs) (laughs) um what so Massacre of Paris what kind of uh themes does it deal with what kind of um obviously when you're dealing with something like uh usurping and and wars between kings and things like that you're dealing with things like jealousy and and royalty Mm. um but is there is there any particular theme in it that particularly draws you Um, i i feel like the power hungriness of certain characters especially the character of catherine i found really interesting the female the female dynamic of um having a a woman have intense amounts of power in a court in ruling over these men that have power in the sense that they're actually in charge but behind the scenes a woman i just found that really interesting and of course we yeah can't... it's very um shakespearean definitely <laughs> and we can't forget of course religious conflict which it features throughout the entire play it's a it's a big theme and in fact the play revolves around it and it's something that's still relevant today religious conflict so yeah yeah. So you're you're directing this show. Yes. But you've you've been a part of quite a few shows on campus so far, haven't you? <laughs> I have. Yeah. Um <laughs> I know certainly last year you were a part of 
uh, you were stage manager for Love Labour's Lost, and you were... Um, I, I was Comenius in Coriolanus as yes, well. Yes, you were Comenius in Coriol- Coriolanus. Uh, right now, uh, both of us are acting in Iphigenia. But yeah, so so you've done lots of shows uh, at uni, and I imagine quite a few elsewhere as well. Yes, in secondary school in sixth form, and outside of that as well. I was quite involved with drama and various performing arts things, but yeah. Very good. Um, so out of all of that experience, what has been your favourite show to work on so far? Oh, um, oh wow. Well, um... It was in sit form. Um, we did um, the two parts of um, His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman. Oh, very um, good. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we hired the, the real puppets from the National Theatre. Wow. So, okay. Goodness. Yeah. Um, so I, I acted in that. That was one of my favourite things. I had the part of Lady Samakia. So I got to work with a puppet as well. And the th- feeling of when that play ended it's i haven't experienced that yet because oh man that was the best play i've ever done in my entire life yeah i i miss it every day that sounds incredible yeah it really was it's uh, is puppetry something that you would want to get into more or something that you think that societies uh at this university should probably explore a little bit more uh, i definitely yes but it takes a lot of professionalism to use puppetry. But if it's yeah. not done well, sometimes it's not the best. But I feel like if it's something that society is willing to invest in, puppetry is definitely worth it. A hundred percent. Brilliant. Yeah, because I, I know one of my um one of my favourite shows that I've ever seen is uh War Horse at the National and that has just some incredible puppetry in it. Um yeah, I, I I couldn't agree more. I think it is a very uh, it's a very kind of professional. You need to be professional with it, and you need it takes incredible physicality and focus in order to do it properly. But I think when it's done properly, it's incredible. Definitely. So that's really cool. That's really cool. I'm very jealous. Um, so that's outside of the uni. What about inside of the uni? Is there anything in particular that stands out to you as as or any any particular fond memory with, that sticks out to you in the shows you've been in? Oh, definitely Coriolanus. Of the, 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 it was the first play I did at university. It was the only play that I was actually um, confident enough to audition for in first term. Um, just having a part that was so different to parts that I've usually been typecast as. I feel like it's... <laughs> I've been typecast as the moody teenage girl quite a lot. So right. it, was like, it was It was nice to have a, have a strong army general sort of character that um, I haven't done before. And of course the cast have become some of my closest friends. And yeah. It was definitely the highlight of my first term doing that show. It was great. I mean, I went to go see it. It was uh, an amazing show. Um, Really well done to everyone who was a part of that. Um, So you've... Obviously, in Coriolanus, you were an actor. Now you're directing uh, in Love Labours. You were a stage manager in... uh, For the... For Princess Ida, um, you were going to be assistant stage manager. That's one of the Savoy shows from last year. Um... Which role did you think you particularly gelled with? Like, out of all of them, what do you think of yourself as primarily? A director, an actor, a, you know? It's a hard one, actually. Because um, the crew roles at university are something that I haven't experienced outside of university before. Yeah. So our our role of DSM, our, our distinction between DSM and SM is something that I haven't really encountered outside of university. Mm. So I feel like here, it acting is definitely what I've gelled with the most. But outside of university, I've done um, crew roles that encompass both D 
DSM and SM, which I, I loved and it was fun just because of the organisational side of it, yeah. where you get to do everything instead of just <laughs> working the lights or stuff yeah. like that. Um, but yeah, no, definitely acting here, I've gelled with the most. That's not to say I don't love directing because directing this show has been an absolute blessing. It's been lovely. Brilliant. Um, so yeah, but that's just the way it's been for me personally. I mean, it's it sounds like uh, I I live with one of your cast, of course, and um, yeah, it sounds like it's going really well. People are really excited about being a part of it and rehearsing for it and stuff like that. How's how are rehearsals going? Well, rehearsals have just finished. Actually, I like to think that they went well. Um, uh, directing the cast has been lovely. The actors are stellar. Um, rehearsals have been going well um because it's different from a normal show it's an audio drama obviously the directing side of it has been a bit different um so just focusing on vocal skills and stuff like that rather than blocking yeah which is yeah it's it's been different from what i've experienced from directing previously um but yeah it's been go it's Went well, I think. Good, I, good I to hope hear so, that. at least. Yeah, because obviously the um, it's a completely different set of skills, isn't it? Uh, voice acting versus uh, regular acting. Definitely. Yeah, which, as again, we both know because of If Janaya. So, in terms of directing, what is your general approach to to the role? Is is are there any particular influences you like to put on, uh, particularly for this play? Anything that stands out? Anything that you felt you wanted to incorporate? Um, well, I'm not a drama student, for one, so it's, yeah. it's hard to have those dramatic influences in there when I'm directing. I just sort of have my own style. I just do it my own way. There's a fine line with directing, I found, between being extremely dictator yeah. and, um, like, you know, leaving the actors to it. I'm very much um, a director that where the actors have full influence over their characters. I give them full artistic license as to what they want to do with it. And it's been really enlightening actually to let actors explore their own characters with my aid. And um, yeah, Yeah, it's, it's incredibly important to let that creativity bloom, isn't it? Because if you start, I, I've, I completely agree. If you try and box them in or, or, uh, then it ends up killing all the energy that they're, that the actors are bringing and why you cast them in the first place. Completely. So I've just been trying very much to just guide them in their their vocal skills because some of the actors haven't actually done Shakespearean style work yeah. before. And our dramaturg Cassie has been particularly um, amazing with helping the actors uh, work with the Shakespearean language where they haven't before. Yeah. Um, but it's it's been really lovely. So... Um... It's you often find when you're kind of acting or directing in Shakespeare that a lot of the cast haven't actually approached or worked with Shakespeare or the Shakespearean dialect that often. And so it's quite hard to kind of get people out of their shells with that. Uh, obviously, you said that Cassie, who is the co-host of this show, um, has been helping you to kind of get get through to people in terms of that but is there anything in particular that you have found that works with getting people to kind of understand the dialect a little bit better yeah so um where i feel that actors might be struggling to find the intentions of the scene i just ask them what they think the language means in simple english um i found it very helpful as well to um just do sort of like creative sort of workings with the tech so like can you perform this with no du- with no punctuation to keep the pace up please can you yeah. you know do that sort of thing and i i find that um it really helps because it's the language is definitely a barrier with shakespeare and it scares some people off yeah but yeah i feel I agree. like it, yeah definitely i i think it's it's so important to actually get the i i call them tricks to get the like those tricks uh right in terms of like okay let's do it with no punctuation to see how that changes the flow of the scene and things like that um i i think it's why and i stand by this uh i think a lot a lot of not all but a lot of really good directors have been actors beforehand because it's 
you learn from other people using that stuff on you and f- using uh, these these kind of methods and, and techniques on you um, to what actually works to like change the pace of a scene or get the intention out of someone to make them feel more grounded, stuff like that. Uh, what do you think about that? Yeah, completely. It, it, it has helped being an actor, actually. But um, because of the way that this play has been, it's because it's an audio drama, it's, it's a bit different just because quite frequently in normal directing and normal shows, you wouldn't really focus on vocal intention quite as much as you do with a, an audio drama. So, um, yeah, it's definitely been helpful being an actor before and working on vocal intentions and things like that have been a focus for me as an actor in the past so it's really helped Um, yeah I think intention is so important in terms of fine like as an actor um because no matter what kind of play you're people often say that you know intention is mainly based in the kind of naturalistic Stanislavski-esque um style of theatre but I I feel like no matter what kind of theatre you're doing you kind of need the like things like intention and objective are so integral to any character you're playing it doesn't matter what style of theatre it's a part of don't you agree absolutely if you don't have the intentions in a character it's not going to be believable which I guess is sometimes fine if it's a farcical show per se but the massacre of paris has definitely not been that yeah. at least i've been trying to to keep it away from that yeah <laughs> no no that makes sense uh, uh yeah so in, in your experience as an actor is there anyone is there any director you've worked with in particular who's who's really left their mark on you really kind of guided you uh to become the di- director and actor that you are today wow um that's a really good question um before coming to university, um, all of the directors I've worked with have been school teachers and things like that. And obviously they're influential, but ultimately there's a power dynamic there that I don't yeah. really want to work with. So um, <laughs> I, I feel like uh-huh. at, at university, I, I've been directed by George Collins and they were absolutely yeah. great. At, um, I, I've definitely yeah. done things with them that um, I've, I haven't before, such as like physical work, movement workshops you know things like that that I just haven't done before and I think that that was really helpful in burdening me as an actor (laughs) yeah they are an incredible um physical and conceptual director from what I hear about their rehearsal process and uh, their design of shows so on top of uh just talking about things that are happening at the uni let's briefly talk about some things that are happening in the rest of the world. One massive piece of news that came out is the RSC has unveiled that they are reopening in December with a series of uh, programs. So I I did want to hear your opinion on this. What what do you think about theatres maybe beginning to reopen once we're out of this second lockdown? That's a that's a really interesting question. Obviously, the theatre industry is extremely important to me, and we need to save it. We we need to yeah. further it. And I, it's really interesting that they're reopening. I'm assuming that any shows they do will be very small casts, and audiences will have to be socially distanced. But I think it's great news. That's that's really interesting to hear. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm not quite sure what else to say on that. The um. I think the plan is with it is that they're going to they're going to try and just produce normal shows but the actual uh the kind of seating arrangements for people watching the shows will be different oh, right. from uh the articles that I've seen that's what I'm kind of gleaning from it but I I I personally think that I mean this is amazing it's amazing that the possibility of theater, theaters reopening relatively soon uh because I miss theatre. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. um, but also, uh, you do kind of have to think about, it. you don't want to jump the gun on this, especially if it ends up, uh, I think it's a real risk kind of committing to something like this because um, I think we're all pretty unsure as to 
kind of where we're going with this moving forwards. So we we don't really know what's going to happen. So I think it's very kind of brave. I think brave is the word. Kind of to to commit to uh, going forwards with something like this. Definitely. It's you're right, it's brave. It's I don't necessarily want to say it's preemptive because obviously I'm very happy about this news. But yeah, it's it's risky yeah. given that we're not quite out of the woods yet. Yeah. Something else that I have seen is that, and this this is a different piece of news. Uh, are you familiar with the actress Judy Dench? I I am. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. so Dame Judy Dench <laughs> and uh, David Tennant have basically announced that they're going to go go into a series of conversations as part of uh, something produced by the RSC, where they're basically going to be talking about theatre and their experiences with Shakespeare and stuff like that. Oh wow. And. Uh, yeah, what do you think about that? That's really interesting. I love David Tennant. I love Judy Dench. I'll be listening to that if I yeah. get the chance. Like, yeah, honestly, that's... same. I, I, yeah, I can't wait. I think. Uh, have you seen any of uh, them performing Shakespeare at any point? I actually haven't. Um, I've seen clips of um, David. Ten- is it Richard the Third or Hamlet that he does? Uh, he, or is he, it both? He did. A, he's done versions of Richard the Second, I believe it is, a, and Hamlet. Yeah, so oh, yeah. I, I've seen the Hamlet. Well, I've seen the film of him performing Hamlet, um, and honestly, just one incredible performer. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Also, I had the amazing uh, luck to be able to see Jane, uh, Dame Judi Dench as uh, Titania in a version of oh. Midsummer Night's Dream, which is wow. excellent. Yeah. Wow. You're very lucky. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. So closing closing question. I do have one one more question for you. What is your favourite Shakespeare play? Oh, oh, that is a l- lovely question, which I don't know the answer to. Probably as you like it. I I love the pastoral elements of it. Um, it's mm. something that I would absolutely love to direct, and um, ugh, yeah, it's really lovely. It's it's, I don't know, I, warm and fuzzy is probably a nice way to write it. It's, it's, okay. It's, it's just a nice play. I just quite like it. I love um, that. Okay. That's brilliant. <laughs> well, I think we should, we should leave it there. And uh, okay, brilliant. Thank you so much, Rebecca, for coming on. Thank you for having me. Um, it's been, it's been fascinating talking to you about, about your show. Uh, do you want to give, do you want to have a chance to plug it? So, we are airing The Massacre at Paris as of the 10th of December. It will be online forever after that, but we're doing a sort of premiere of it over Zoom, which you can access from the Shakespeare Facebook page. I hope that you will come and listen to it. And see it, actually, as well, as we have artists drawing the scenes, which you can look at whilst you're listening to it. So What, uh, What does that entail? Oh, so um, just to keep to the sort of historical accuracy bit, we've just got pencil drawings of, you know, a moment from each scene um, Mm. underneath the actors performing. And yeah, so hopefully that will be lovely. Brilliant. I'm really excited for it because obviously, as I said before, I live with one the car, so I have heard a lot of him recording um, his part through the wall um and so yeah i'm just really excited i think this is going to be a really amazing play everyone do come uh come watch it and also go check it out on youtube uh or wherever it's going to be so thank you thank you very much thank you for joining me and rebecca this week for bard times this has been jack hardman stay safe and in the words of the bard himself Cowards die many times before their deaths. The valiant never taste of death but once.